Now everybody knows that kerosene is a 19th century fuel and if you use it today you are probably Amish. Well I use it every day and I'm going to show you that you don't have to be Amish to use kerosene every single day and it will end up saving you money. So why did I go with kerosene and not uh, uh, propane? Because I can't get natural gas. I had fuel oil. I had an old octopus in cellar number one that used eight gallons a day. It's okay if uh, it's 35 cents a gallon, but not when it's multiple dollars a gallon. So there was a guy at work where I work that uh, had this setup that I've got. I liked what he had. I liked his figures. And then he showed me that kerosene had 138,000 BTU of uh, uh, energy per gallon. Propane only has about 93. So some years kerosene is more expensive than propane, some years it isn't. I think it averages out. So since I was starting from T0, uh, I decided to have one fuel that would do everything except for the little bit of gas I use for my cooktop. Uh, it makes life a lot easier that one fuel instead of okay we got to have some this kind of fuel now we got to have this kind of fuel now we got to have this kind of fuel no just one does everything and right after i got every all the heat installed my electric water heater started leaking okay let's plumb into the uh, new gas line that i just ran for my cooktop well you can't do that because the uh, instant on water heaters take a three quarter inch line. I had just plumbed everything in half. I'm not tearing it all out and doing it again. So right where the uh, kerosene uh, water heater uh, is placed in cellar one, which you'll see, right above it is the kerosene fuel line going to the main heater, the laser 73. So it was easy enough to tee in three valves and run it right to the uh, heater or the water heater and I do not regret it. Okay, here's my Laser 73 AT. I've had it for about 12 years. That's my main source of heat, 40,000 BTU. Ignore the floor, we're putting down a new uh, floor in the old house and uh, putting some leveling compound. Uh, you know to <clears throat> level it out and over there is my perfection heater as a nightlight <clears throat> over there is uh, my X10 stuff because I have X10 home automation and I guess I can show you over here this is the setup to uh, control the uh, heater because this one was made before they came out with the good electronics so you've got the uh, X10 Pro uh, heating unit that heats the uh, uh, thermistor. And that uh, allows you to set back the uh, temperature of the house. And as you can see, I've got it mounted on a uh, piece of Velcro. So I can adjust it up and down to get the right amount of heat coming from the resistors inside the X10 Pro unit to uh, fake out the thermistor and then just a digital unit to let me know how I'm doing. And here we have my laser 30. That's a 15,000 BTU unit. We've got that out in the uh, the mud room uh, to uh, warm that side of the house for the really cold winter uh, nights that uh, 40,000 can't reach all the way out here. This is a 1999 model. I've rebuilt it a couple times over the years. Okay, down in cellar number one, here is two of my uh, kerosene tanks. On the left is tank number two, on the right is tank number three. Each tank has its own uh, fuel gauge 
and I've matched all the fuel gauges so that they all read at the top of the the red uh, float instead of the bottom so I know exactly what uh, I've got for fuel in each one. <clears throat> if you pull back you can see uh, the valving that controls everything. And then right here I had magnetic signs made up so that I know exactly how to set the complicated valve setup for each tank and then in between them is uh, a drain for water and two valves for gravity feed one to the other Then up here we've got a fill right gasoline pump that pumps from tank two to tank one and there is a gas station hose that runs all the way across the uh, cellar number one and uh, and out to uh, tank number one which we call the gravity tank here we have tank number one called the gravity tank it is set on uh, tall legs because I have to have 18 inches of head to feed the uh, laser heaters and you will see over here there is the line going up to the top of the tank to fill uh, from tank 2 as tank 1 goes down and there's the vent there's the emergency fill okay so with that tank set up <coughs> I can take I can uh, take a ladder and use the emergency fill for tank one the gravity tank and I can fill it that way or what I normally do is I fill tank two from an outside fill then I pump it up to tank one I can also fill tank three or I can fill tank two and then open the lower valves and have it gravity fill to equalize uh, between the two uh, two and three so that uh, I don't have to uh, pump and with that each tank being 275 gallons when they're all full I can have a year and a half a year and three quarter maybe even two years of uh, heat so that's how I heat with kerosene now if I uh, want hot water I get it through this Toyotomi semi instant on uh, hybrid uh, kerosene water heater it does uh, it's got 148,000 BTU burner gives me two gallons a minute until I run out of kerosene uh, from stone cold it takes 90 seconds to come up to temperature and it has a five gallon tank that it holds uh, in reserve so that you're drawing instant water and then the burner comes on and it warms the tank back up generally during the day if I'm not around I leave it off I don't bother to heat the five gallon tank because it's only 90 seconds and then when you are drawing it's in uh, I'd say maybe 10 to 12 second burns to uh, maintain your two gallons a minute I've had this in service um, for about eight ten years Okay, the big uh, hose, the gas station hose, that is fuel going out to the gravity tank. The copper line is fuel coming in. Valve to shut it off. There's a T. You've got your three valves. On the left, it's going to the big heater, uh, the Laser 73AT and the water heater. The one on the right goes to the little uh, Laser 30, and everything is... Uh, valved so that if there's a problem you can shut that line down without killing the whole house 
Now while I do have a gas cooktop, I still have my 1957 uh, Perfection uh, K12 two burner uh, kerosene stove that you've seen in the other videos. And if I'm going to cook for any length of time, that is the unit that I choose to run all day, like if I'm doing pulled pork or chili or something. And while I don't normally light with kerosene, uh, I have this one hanging over the kitchen table. Uh, this I designed it and uh, built it. It's a uh, Plum and Atwood American duplex inch, dual inch and a half inch uh, wicks with a uh, Pyrex globe, and it puts out a lot of light. And if you're interested, here's a quick shot of all my other uh, lights from the uh, Rayo on down to the itty bitty night light. And for emergencies, if I have power and the, the main lasers fail, I have a Corona inverter 5096 that I imported from the UK. It's a Japanese fan heater. And there is the uh, power uh, adapter taking US 110 to British 220 to power the heater. And that's not to mention the, this Rayo 26, which was Catherine Thurrows, and my, uh, my father's lantern. It's a Dietz D-Light that I put a reflector on. And for the perfection heaters, I have four uh, heaters that can be burnt. Uh, I don't use the night light one. That's in two nights shape to, uh, to burn. But I do have them if everything else fails. I also have a uh, kerosene powered gas grill that I designed and built. So now you've seen how I use a 19th century fuel in the 21st century.